Hi, everybody. Welcome to Room and Board. My name is Chris George, and today we are taking a look at an Onk storage solution. So if you're like me and you ended up going all in on Onk and then thought, oh my goodness gracious, I cannot store this. Well, I've spent the last two days making something that turns all of this into... <laughs> Just this, and I'm pretty proud of it. Okay, that was kind of a lie for dramatic effect. The Divine Offerings box, which some of it could fit into the Tome of Wonders, the Tomb of Wonders. Oh, I hate it when people say Tome and I just did it myself, dang it. Uh, some of it which could have fit into the Tomb of Wonders. I opted just to keep it all separate and honestly, I'm probably just gonna get rid of it because I like having everything into two boxes and what's better about this solution than anyone else's out there is that ideally, if I needed to, I could actually take this box with me and leave the Tomb of Wonders, get out of here. I could just take this one box with me and play the complete game with all the content. How? By using one little proxy thing but otherwise, yes, all the content. And when I say content, I mean gameplay content. So you have your pharaohs, all 12 clans in here, and all your guardian cards, not all the guardians. Obviously, the guardians will be fitting into the Tomb of Wonders. But if I'm just going out and I wanted to take Ankh and I didn't have room for two boxes, I still have all the guardian cards in here, and you can always use proxies from the other clans to play the full game. You'll see it when we get into it. There's some room in here still where you could put a couple guardians if you wanted to have those specific figures and not use proxies. I decided against it, but you may not. And don't worry, we've got it all. Let's switch it up. I'm excited to show you because I enjoy making these sorts of inserts. I feel like this was in desperate need of one, and I'm very proud in terms of how optimized this is for setup and teardown. Have I hyped it up enough? You'll have to let me know if mine sucks and yours is better. And if so, that's great. Make sure to leave a link to some pictures in the comments for everybody to look for those who are trying to make their own. Okay, I will not see you, but I'll see your hands, or you'll see my hands. Jeez, here we go. One quick note before we jump into it, if you find making inserts yourself an overwhelming experience, make sure to check out my building a perfect insert on a budget video. I am horrible with crafts and I have slowly gotten a bit better, but you'll see this is not professionally done. It's hacked to pieces, but it works. And if it works, who cares what it looks like? It doesn't need to be wood. You don't need to break the bank on it. I spent $15 on the material for this and really that's just because I'm using some deck boxes like I did in Rising Sun. You'll see it. I'm giving away the lead. Let's get into it. So here we go. Now my main priority as I was saying is that for me to be able to take one box and play with whatever content I want. So again if you watched my other video you'll see that being flush with the lid is incredibly important to me and there's actually something I could have added in here but it would have given a little bit of lid lift so I opted to not use the Kickstarter tool. So you have the map, the board right at the top because the first thing you're going to pull out is you're going to put the board on the table. And then we have all of our rule books here. We have the scenario book, the rule book, and then all the expansion sort of rule books. So in case you need to reference anything, that's all included in the main box. Now, ideally, when you know how to play this game a little bit better, I guess I should turn that towards you. Uh, wh when you know how to play this game a little bit better, you can ditch some of these rule books and put it into a separate section or a separate box. And I'm hoping that that will be the case because then I can add in, uh, you'll see I have the, the original, not the Kickstarter, just the original political uh, Pharaohs expansion card. And the reason this is not the Kickstarter is because the Kickstarter is a thicker cardboard. And if I put the cardboard in here, I would get box lid lift. So you absolutely can put the cardboard in this. You're just going to get a little bit of box lift. And whereas 
for me, I didn't have it that way. Then we still have the cardboard, the regular cardboard for your actions thing and the devotion. Now here, also, because you're going to put that out, you're going to be setting up the board, right? Also with a, with the thought of optimizing how you set it up, what happens next in the order of setup is everybody picks which god they want to be. So I have all of the different god dashboards, all 12 of them listed for you to take your random ones, and then you can just put that to the side. Um, now you see I have an empty space here, and that is just because I'm waiting on two different colored deck boxes for Amun and Toth. I have a red and a white one coming. Uh, I just wanted to film this video right now before they arrived. But what I found with the gods is that these deck boxes, you may have noticed them from when from my Rising Sun solution, they actually fit an entire gods worth of the smaller gods. So this is Hathor, and Hathor is actually the smallest of the gods it seems, because I was able to fit all of Hathor's regular people in here. Uh, I'll, just, uh, I'll just dump it out so that everybody can see what's in there. And then we get big old Hathor out. So these deck boxes can hold a lot of stuff. You'll see it's kind of hooked on the bottom. Um, Hathor is still doing okay. And the reason they can actually hold a god, because the figures, I was saying this in my unboxing, because they are so like sturdy, basically. Um, let's get a better, that's a bit better to see. Uh, because these little guys and gals are so sturdy and they are so flat, while that doesn't really help for the making dynamic poses, they're never going to be that big either. So they actually can fit, if you if you put them in carefully, into one of these Ultra Pro deck boxes. And I was actually looking to get the 100 um, card deck boxes. These are actually the, these are 80 cards, but you can fit an entire Hathor. Her bases, these two bases, they just go tucked in behind. Her separate deck of cards, now these aren't sleeved. Um, I think sleeving would not be the best way to uh, make this solution work, but I think you still might have room because it's only seven cards really. And then if you're careful, you just gently put her followers all around resting at the bottom and you can fit like four. You can see kind of how I'm adding them in. And I'm not even looking as I'm putting them in because I'm trying to frame it up for the camera. And you can see that they are so small that they kind of just fit in there. The only thing, these I've kept in a bag these are from the Divine Offerings, they're the plastic tokens, or your copy may have come with uh, not plastic tokens, in which case they're easier to fit. I've kept them in a bag for now. I'll probably end up just opening those and dumping them out, but even with Hathor and all this stuff, oh, a couple extra bases, sure, just shove them in there. It's not the most uh, elegant of solutions, but it is for optimized storage. It works out noise and toit. And you can see there's like a tiny bit of give in these boxes, which is great because their base is actually a little bit wider than what the bottom would be. It's actually going to come out to like here and here. And so you want to be gentle. You don't want to cram it in because you don't want to warp your bases. But if you are willing to be careful, you can then fit an entire god into the box. And what I've done is I wanted there to be a little bit more room for some of the gods, the smaller gods, we'll move on to the bigger ones in a second. Um, and so what I did was I just took a little piece of construction paper and made myself a little base pouch. And all that this is fitting are these two sort of wide bases. Now I was contemplating not having the bases with the gods because in Rising Sun you get so many bases because you're constantly putting on monsters, but 
that you only have four bases, you only have two big ones in case both of your guardians level two and level three are uh, the bigger versions. So it's not like you need a bunch of variability. You very well could have taken all the bases and put them in one spot and like a bank, but I figured I wanted to keep it on hand, but I didn't want to cram it into the box. You see, it's pretty stuffed. It's not even as stuffed as Hathor, probably because the bases are on the outside. And with Ra, especially, you have to be careful because he has to be put in on an angle um, in order to fit. And actually, the reason why the red by Amun is not out yet is because I kind of, here, I'll go get him. Uh, if my mic will allow me to reach him. He was in the surgery bay because this little tip, his little, uh, his little spiky, his ankh that he's holding up top. I don't know if you can see it, I hope you can. Um, this little thing is very delicate and it did snap off, but all it takes is a little super glue and it goes back on. Um, it did probably snap off because I was trying to jam him into one of these boxes. So the next time I put him in there, I'm gonna also angle him to make sure that there's a little bit of give. Uh, for these, the key is you can see that it looks like it looks like Ra's spear is gonna be smushed here, but there's actually a little bit more space up top than you would think. Um, and that's why if we look at Hathor again, you can see her cards, actually her cards have shifted down. A lot of the cards when I put them in were, uh, were sticking up a bit. Yeah, you see how Anubis's cards are sticking up a little bit? But that's okay because there is some, the top of the box is not here. There's actually just like a couple millimeters extra and that space makes all the difference, especially for Raw's little staff and it not snapping off. So six of the gods can fit into these deck boxes and you can just, oh, I'm scratching. You gotta be careful not ripping your homemade little sleeves on the side. Um, Six of the gods can fit into these deck boxes, and that is a huge space saver because for me, I wanted my main priority for this main box was to have all of the gods in one spot. Um, these I haven't sorted because I'm, I'm not sure if I'm getting rid of the divine offerings yet, so I haven't combined their little scorekeeping marker just so I don't have to go and separate them later. These are the, uh, the tokens which can go there. Then take a look at this section first. Um, then I made a little, a little tray that holds all of the monuments, the plinth, and the extra, the round trackers and the action trackers. So this is a three le leveled kind of tier. And then here, because when you access it, you're going to then pull it out because you're going to always have, you're going to always need your monuments as a sort of bank as more monuments are built throughout the game. And then you have your followers and your camels, all of which you'll need to access in the game. So I made it into its own little separate pouch. Uh, and then here I have the, the guardian cards where you can just take them out and choose which ones to use. Uh, and then also at the backs, I, I have the Pharaoh cards as well because they're all the same size. So they fit into this sort of 1.5 centimeter wall that I made. Um, there and then down here you'll actually see there's a lot of space in this container and I wasn't sure you can see these things fell I have the uh, as I these are the merged God uh, things. so if your God gets merged if you're last or second last you merge um, and so I have these just tucked on the side I made sure to incorporate incorporate that into my measurements and the reason I wanted these on the side too is because actually this, you have that little bit of space from the devotion track if you needed them to stick up. They're not actually sticking up, so this didn't really matter, but that's why I initially decided to put these on the side. Um, here is all the Pharaoh stuff and the specific scenario tiles. So you're not, I'm not always gonna use this particular expansion. That's why it's gonna live at the bottom of the box. What you can do here, you'll see there aren't any guardians in this solution. All of my guardians are in the other case. Uh, what I might do and was thinking about doing is you can create 
these can these can live on top of the cards and then there's this open space where you could put the three smallest guardians so the cat mummies or the mummies and um, some other guardians they could feasibly live here you just make a little dividing wall and give them their own little section and the reason I would want them to live here is so that I could use them if I'm just taking this one box somewhere I could use those little guardians at least as proxies um, the reason I am not going to use them is because I like having the guardians all in the same space so that's why it lives like this and these go here uh, now for the gods this one was a little bit trickier because the key when you're making these they're just made out of foam core but there's two things to consider I'll pull out set first um, the one thing is that this box is not tall enough to be able to use foam core on the bottom so you want to use some sort of cardboard on the bottom when you're making these little boxes and I you can see I just did a, I just used a cereal box so whatever you have on hand that's cool this is foam core you can get it from the dollar store big sheet for like a dollar fifty and you can see that like the reason these guys had to live in these boxes is because they are too tall for the deck boxes I actually thought set might fit and he could have if I was cramming it but this just felt better because I had a I had a nice even number that I could divvy things out between so we've got set and we have Pata as their the kind of smaller ones they don't need that much space you're going to want to measure this out when you're when you're creating this yourself if you're interested in doing this uh, what I would do is take you take a piece of cardboard and you put it down the length of here and then you can make it as long as you need your big guy to be then put the dividing walls because you're gonna to have to slice them map out how big you need your space to be for each one and then you can also map out the, the depth as well uh, I originally thought I might put the guardian cards or the pharaoh cards like along here but I ended up scrapping that idea just because I had that extra space and also because of the mostly because I'm putting the divide the uh, the bases on there now now we've got Sobek and Isis over here and the key to this Isis was actually the first one that I made but the key to Sobek is his friggin tail so I'm going to turn this and you can see that his tail and his base are just poking out the bottom there a bit and that's in order to make him flush because he's got a really unique pose that if he's shifted the way he was in the actual base you can also see I cut out uh, a little a little hole for his staff it doesn't actually need to reside in there anymore because I made the, the bottom base so big that he can slip into it um, but the key is to have so back on top and then you position him just above Isis so that his little tail so that his little tail just hangs into whatever space is available it can it can be oriented in, in kind of any way just not really next to the base so I try to I try to make a little space and that way you can pass them out and then whoever gets Sobek just needs to you know pull them out without breaking the tail as soon as you do it and I did the same thing for Horus as well Horus is awesome he's probably the biggest mini that's out there but you also he also is a little bit wide not as bad as Sobek but I gave a little you can see there that his little uh, his little spear is poking out the bottom there. So in order to lessen the box lid lift, don't be afraid of making these little holes. It's not like things are going to fall through. And then the rest of the pieces are just like there's so there's so much space because they are so big. So there's never a worry. And then Osiris is down here because he's so tall. And again, I put both of them together because they're kind of the tallest ones um, and the least bulky. You can kind of arrange these however you want, but that's just how I did it. So with this, I'm actually, I'm very happy with being able to have all of the gods in one box because I wouldn't want to use proxies for the gods. And then if I'm out somewhere, I can... Uh, take all my guardians which are in the second box so we're just going to put this back together um, I organize it I'm also organizing this specifically so that 
The Guardian cards are down below. You don't have to get this um, specific with it. Um, this is just something that I'm considering when I'm doing it, because if if I'm using the scenario with the Pharaohs, I'm gonna have to take both of these out. But if I'm only using the scenario with the extra things, then I only have to remove that and those two can sit in there and I can just grab the Guardian cards if I want to and leave it all kind of set up. Um, Yeah, I'm particularly happy in terms of how this, uh, now these three are different heights. So when you're making this, if you're gonna, if you wanna do this design, um, pick the highest thing and measure it. I think these are all three different heights. So I measured the plinth for this one to make sure I had clearance. And actually I didn't think the plinth was gonna go in this one, to be honest. Um, so I measured the plinth for that one. I measured the thickness of the cards the card stack for this one and then I measured the Faro for that one down there because you want to have that clearance and you don't want to have anything uh, squishing it right um, and those just go on top there I might try to find try to make a little section for those as well so they're not a bag because I find as I the more I do this the less bags I enjoy owning but yeah I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with how accessible that makes everything. Oh, raw is see when I pulled raw out, he's his box lid was lifting a little bit, so you got to be careful. Um, and if there is anything that is a little bit higher, you can put it on the you can put it in the middle because the middle having lift in the middle. There's a bit more give in the box, so you can you can get it that way. That goes there. We then put the bigger thing on top, and this is where you need to make sure you can see that my, make sure you include your measurements when you're making the other ones that you have an extra little bit of room. You can see that this stuff is flush together. Actually, it's flush with Horus. It's not flush with the other ones because all I did when I made these I actually uh, made so many mistakes. You can see, um, I'll pull one out, I'll pull Sobek out. I made so many mistakes and I thought, oh man, I overestimated, it's always better to overestimate, and I have, uh, I had so much more space, so I just took a, you can see that that's not level at all, and I just kind of hacked bits away from it with my X-Acto knife, and there's a, it was overhanging on the cardboard base, so I kind of chopped it off a bit. Anything to kind of get those little millimeters of space back, that's what you kind of have to consider. Um, so you just hack at it. It doesn't matter. It looks fine. It's durable material. Just do it slowly to make sure everything works. And then this is now flush on top. This can slide across. Upset's guy is poking up out of there. Um, but generally, this should be able to do this without clipping any clipping any of the minis, right? That's how you can know if they're protected. Obviously don't do it as violently as I did if you care about the safety of your minis. And then ideally, if you're gonna keep the rule books in here, make sure that the stapled portion, which is heavier, that can kind of overhang on the other minis, right? Because there is that extra space that you get from these boards. And so if you wanna just lessen the lift it a bit, because there's a lot of uh, stuff here, it can kind of flop over and that will uh, that'll give you a better a better closure. Boom. And then all nice and closed. And then if we flip it, you can see there's a bit there's a bit of there's a bit of uh, Lift lid. I know I'm saying there's no lift lid. Microphone's like, there's lift lid. Uh, there's a bit, if it's on its side, it kind of opens up a little. This is one that I wouldn't want to store horizontally, but I could. Um, you absolutely could. And the reason this, this happens, it's actually more, you can see what it actually is when it's pushed down together. Uh, the reason this happens is the, the rule books. So once those are gone, I also anticipate it not being there, but I'm not worried about it tipping on its end because I know everything is so secure. That was the that was the more exciting part. Uh, for the Guardians, I just wanted to make sure I could get all the Guardians into one box, and you'll see I actually have a bunch of space still left. Uh, the reason, again, this is in the middle is because it's a little 
poofy, but instead of like trying to smush and, and trim off some stuff, which you can do, uh, I just put the biggest part in the middle and then it kind of holds. This one has like a tiny bit of lid lift, but I'm not too worried. And all I did was I took the existing inserts, I talked about this in the building custom inserts on a budget video, uh, use the inserts that are right for you. So you very well could make three tiers of foam core and just throw all the guardians together if that's something you want to do. For me, I intend to paint these. Um, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to paint one because I'm so bad at painting and then I'm going to get Zach to paint one. He's exceptional. And then we'll compare. I might, I'm planning to film it. So we'll see if, uh, we'll see if that horrible painting series takes off. So that, that, these were the guardians. These were the guardians from the main box. And then here, I ju you just, again, hack out the bits that, no, that you no longer need. So these two were from the Guardian set. Each, each pair of these is gonna be hacked out. And I did that because I noticed at the, in the Tomb of Wonders, uh, you get this section right here. But down here are the Sobek and Pata warriors. So I just chopped that out and then there was space in that row. So I wanted to include the guardians. And then here, it looks like this was, this was, uh, I'm pretty happy with this actually, except here, this is kind of fallen. Um, what again, you just hack out the parts that, <laughs> that, you don't have. So down here was actually Sobek and Pata and the Pantheon, the Plinth. Uh, so what I did, these are again Guardians. Basically you're just trying to cram in that extra Guardian set. If you got that extra Guardian set, if you don't, you don't have to worry about it. Um, you have a lot more space. But I just cut out each of them into their own individual portion. Ooh. This little guy, those two guys go together. These are three in a set. Where'd my third guy go? Oh, he fell down here. He's kind of resting up top there for easy access. We're gonna use those guys. These are also ones that like I could put, uh, and, and honestly looking into this and seeing it, I may put these guys into, these guys in particular from the Guardian set into that main box in that Pharaoh section. It kind of seems like something I might do. And then, also here, the more crocodiles that were there. So all, you can see all the parts that were out, that are out here that are just kind of chunked up. These were all the guardians from the guardian set box. This box. And I knew I just wanted to have all my guardians in one spot. I wanted to say, okay, we're picking who? Great, then you open this box and you take out the ones that you want. So I'm keeping this one on the bottom. You'll see there was also this extra space up here that wasn't needed. And there was space down here that wasn't needed. And I thought, okay, great. And all I did was I cut these out into their own little portions and I stuck the ones in that seemed to be the same height. That's it. <laughs> that guy goes there. They honestly both maybe could go down here. Nah. So it's here. Oop. He was kind of up there. He fits, he nestles in nicely. And then I just had an extra little guy down there. Which I'm pretty sure it was him because I gave him I gave him a little extra extra space because you can use these lips to hang off of things and like still not damage anything. Uh, this guy can go there-ish is how I had them. I mean, you can also just, these protected. You just stick them in there, he's fine. Um, and then this guy was also balancing kind of, kind of in this, in this little crater as well. I wanted to use this space. It's not actually perfect. I may go back and cut out a little section, but for now it works. And then putting it back, you this also served as the lid for this, right? That's why these two have to go in order. So you either use this as your bottom or this as your top. And I think it works better as the bottom because that's kind of what it was designed for because it can still hook on and protect in the little ways that it should have. And you can see that baboon's little stick was sticking up there. And then I put these, actually I kind of forget where I put them. I think they go this way, yeah. 
Let's see, well, you can you can rewind and see. Uh, you basically just fiddle around with the bases, right? Because the bases are the the biggest part, and you see where they where they jut out or where they don't. That seems nice. And then again, you just put. Oops. I wanted to keep this lid on. You see, I just kind of. I like having the lid on it a bit because it gives it some sort of protection and stops it from flying all over the place. You can see that it's a little up. Um, it's caught on there. There we go. That's better. Much better. And then you just close it up. Again, we'll do a little flip. I'm not that worried about it flipping. I mean, if I turn this, um, the Shesmu and that other crocodile is going to fall, but that's okay. Ah, I'll do it for you. Ah. You see there's a little bit of box lift. There's a little bit of box lift on this one. Let's see how, how much they went all over the place. Uh, they didn't. That's good. It's really great. Because these, these guys are the only ones who are going to be able to um, flop around, really. Because I didn't keep their portions on. I guess you get a little bit of sticky tape if you wanted them to have a lid. You just get a little bit of sticky tape and you keep those and you just press it down on them. That could have been something I did, but that's already in the recycling, so that's not anything I'm going to do. Anyway, I've spent a long time on this. You get the picture. Um, hopefully that was helpful in managing this giant thing. I know I was really excited to get Ankh to the table and then the five boxes showed up and I just thought, oh man, this is this is too much to be able to have to pull out. And I could already feel myself not wanting to play it because I had to pull out so much. So by doing this insert and mapping it out and really taking my time to figure out what I wanted from it and what I wanted, what would help me set up and what would help me optimize getting it to the table, because that's the whole point. The whole point is to get it to the table sooner. So I was, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I still haven't played it yet, and that was one of the main reasons. I know in my other video I say don't don't make an insert without playing it, but I felt with my experience with Rising Sun and my experience reading through this rule book and knowing the sorts of things that I wanted to accomplish from this thing and, and thinking about the flow of setup and teardown, uh, I feel pretty happy with how this turned out. and. Hopefully it helps you as well, or you found it was interesting. And go enjoy playing Ankh. I know I certainly will. See ya.